And he, yay! Every time it goes off, it's a little a moment of celebration multiple times a day. I'm going to show you how to make your inbox look like this today. So make sure you've got a pen and paper in your hand. This call, it, oh, I forgot to press record. Are you press record? Oh, Febby, press record. This is why I love this woman. <laughs> you can watch the recording that Febby remembered to press record on after this session, and you can come back to this. I'm going to be showing you the 10 steps today to make your inbox look like this. Who's up for that? Yes, chuck a yes in the comments, me please, if you want yours to look like this. All right, step number one for creating a wildly successful online course is to determine what kind of course you are going to create. Step one, your packaging and your pricing. So there are a number of different types of courses that you can create. There are different delivery methods that suit your personal preference, your personal interests in how you like to work with other people. Some of you may really love the intimacy of doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. Perhaps you really love being with smaller groups of people where you can really deeply understand them, hold their hand, work with them, in a real personal kind of manner. Other people, that might be their idea of hell. Some people are going on to create online courses because they hate people, they've had enough of interactivity, and all they wanna do is create a passive product that they are completely separated from, that is uh, totally self-enroll, self-study, self-complete by the learner. Both of those methods are absolutely, completely and utterly fine. Now, the other thing I want you to start thinking about before I go into the detail here, and I am going to go through all these different types of courses and the pricing for your courses, depending which one you pick right now. So stay with me. But I want to pre-frame this first. When it comes to any business model, not just a, an education-based or course-based business model, the first thing you want to ask yourself is which level of the market do you want to work in? So do you want to have lower priced products, much cheaper entry points that are going to help lots and lots of people because more people can afford something that's cheaper? We call this low ticket, high volume. All right now, I'm going to just illustrate this with a pretty triangle. <laughs> Any of you who've ever been watching my videos before may have seen me do this example. So on your piece of paper now, draw yourself a triangle. Now on this triangle, you have three main segments of the market. Okay, now this pen is not amazing. <laughs> so let's pretend that this market is basically the world. No, I'm not a flat earther. I'm a triangle earther. <laughs> All right, so in my triangle earth uh, world, where what we have is the majority of people in the world sit at this largest section of the market. They, this is going to be very stereotypical, by the way, just for me to paint the picture here. But this majority of people on Earth don't have high disposable income. It's just the way the world works, right? The, the majority of the people um, on the planet live paycheck to paycheck, and they don't have tons of spare cash to be spending on things like personal development. So down here, if we want to reach this biggest section of the market, we need to have lower priced products to reach them. And we're going to be able to sell more of those products high volume because there's more people there. However, there still exists this top end of the market, which is your high ticket version. You are always going to have people on planet Earth who will always want to, to buy the Tesla over the Toyota, right? You're always going to have people, by the way, I'm not saying one's better than the other, right? You're always going to have people who want to buy the Gucci version of something instead of the standard high street something. It's just the way it is. You always are going to have people that want the elite, the exclusive, the VIP version of something over the standard version of something. So down at the bottom here, you can sell stuff for low price, but high volume. If you have a goal to help as many people as possible succeed, then you might like to have something in the lower priced option. If you want to help only a few people, for you having loads of customers might be your idea of hell. Perhaps you want to have just a handful of really elite customers, and that's the model that you prefer because they'll be paying super high pricing. 
Now, depending on which of those you pick, you're obviously going to have very different business models. You're going to have a very different level of involvement from you yourself. You're going to have very different types of marketing that will ultimately go and sell those things. But with what I'm going to show you now, with the different types of courses you can create to serve each of these different types of the uh, levels of the market, why not create a different version of your course to have an option at every single one of those levels? Why not help everyone? Why not have the biggest opportunity to make money at the same time as serve every level of the market? So you don't have to pick one type of course. You can take one topic, such as I've done with course creation, and have a free version of that course. You can have a mini version, low price. You can have a super duper high ticket version of that exact same topic. So with that in mind, let's now go back to my screen over here and go into each of these different types of courses in a bit more depth. Now, I'm going to give you guys extremely stereotypical uh, figures, numbers, and sizes in this demonstration. Please don't be literal with the numbers and figures that I'm going to give you. These are a rough guide to get you thinking. I want you guys to remember that you are the creator. This is the ultimate power. You are the creator. You are the expert in your field. You ultimately get to decide the size of your course, the length of your course, the depth of your course, the price of your course. I'm going to give you some benchmarks to start from, um, but please do not think that any of these is the law or that any of these are rules that you must follow or your course is bad. You truly create here. So let's talk about the first type of course uh, that you could create uh, for your for your different levels of the market. Now, I know you can't really see what I've got on the screen here because it's very, very small, but if you do grab the recording of this, I will attach a downloadable PDF that will have this bigger for you to see. So I'm going to walk you through this in steps. Excuse me, I just need a sip of water before I cough. I'm still recovering from a bit of a uh, few months illness. So you can have a lead magnet. A lead magnet is something that you give away for free that is valuable, educational, really quick, really short, really fast, that's going to predominantly simply collect people's email addresses and make them grateful for it. <laughs> so you could, for instance, pick the number one question people ask you time and time again in your topic, film a really short video, create a one page PDF, a one page checklist or something that answers that question super fast. That's going to be enough for people to come in and give you that email address, get a tiny little taste of you and then decide whether they want to go and purchase whatever you might create next. Now, please don't think that you have to create your paid products before you put your lead magnet out there. Please start collecting email addresses yesterday. <laughs> Just get something out there. Um, if you are great on video, make it a video. If you are going to put off creating your lead magnet because you're terrified of the camera, then simply do a one page PDF that answers their questions and helps them move along. Right. I'd rather you start helping people now and collecting email addresses now than you putting it off and not doing it. So get your lead magnet out there. Start promoting that so that your email list is growing behind the scenes whilst you are working on your paid product. So that when your paid product is ready, you're actually gonna have a list of people to promote it to, okay? So the next type of online course that you could create is a mini course. A mini course is something that roughly time-wise is going to fit into about one hour to 90 minutes. I call this lunch break learning. If it's gonna fit into a lunch break, people are very likely to jump in and take it. These days, a kind of 45 to 60 minute workshop is perfectly sufficient. Yes, delivered on Zoom is perfectly sufficient. Does it answer people's questions? Does it get straight to the point, give them some steps, give them some tips, give them some strategies? In fact, what you're watching right now is a perfect example of that, right? I could make this a paid program, a paid workshop. I'm going to take you through the 10 steps. I'm going to give you some actions for each step so that you can go off and start working on your, your course. And it may make you decide whether you want to actually go and buy one of my paid things afterwards. But this is nice and short quick enough for you to fit into your daily life and you're going to come away with some really helpful tips. Now, roughly speaking, if this was your paid course, a paid workshop, a paid mini course, a paid webinar of some kind, um, a lot of people don't like the word webinar. That's why I use the word workshop now. 
This is where you'd be looking roughly at anything from around $9 to $97. Now, I'm not saying that's what you should price a mini course. I'm just sharing that that's kind of roughly what is converting the highest at the moment in the current times. Of course, yours could be cheaper. It could be way more expensive. And that's determined by your expertise, whether you've got qualifications, what else is going on in the market, what you're teaching. But at the moment, a sort of 60 to 90 minute workshop, 45 minute to 90 minute workshop um, would be averaging in that sort of $10 to anything up to $200 type price point. And by the way, I'm talking US dollars when I say dollars, because US dollars is just simply the easiest currency for most countries to be able to convert into their own currency. So I'm just for reference, going to be talking in US dollars for the sake of everyone's ease of conversion. <laughs> All right, so mini course, keep it short, keep it highly focused. Now, another tip with these mini courses is a few years ago, the best courses were the biggest courses. And by best, I mean the ones that sold the most, the ones that were the highest converting and had the most amount of sales were the courses that were these bird mama beasts that covered everything in the topic. That is the complete opposite today. <laughs> so just let me ask you, if I said to you, I can teach you how to create a course in 90 minutes, or I said, I can teach you how to create a course in this 10 month, 500 video course, which one would you pick? Right, you'd pick the 90 minute fast track version, right? Of course you would. Time is more valuable than anything else in the world. So can you, can you instead of going, here is my 50 module gigantic program, instead break it up into lots and lots of workshops or lots and lots of mini trainings. These micro trainings, micro learnings are hugely popular today for a number of reasons. One, people can fit it in their lives. Two, doesn't feel overwhelming. People can think, yeah, I can do that, it's bite-sized. Three, it actually is really a lot easier to sell them because when people are going to Facebook and typing in a question, they don't usually ask a question about an entire topic. They ask about a very specific part of a topic. As my example, people don't go online and say, can you teach me how to create an entire online course business, including and then list everything to do with creating a course? What they will usually say is, how do I do the videos? Or how do I do the funnel part? Or how do I come up with the right topic? They ask specific questions about the overall topic, and they do exactly the same in your field as well. So by creating these micro learnings, you're essentially taking one question and producing a really amazing practical workshop to help people achieve the result of you answering that question. So when people come into your emails asking that question, or you see them on Facebook asking that question, or you go to do your paid advertising, it is so much easier for you to say, here's my workshop on that. Here's my mini course on that. Here's my mini training on that. And they're like, wow, this is the exact answer to my exact question. How perfect. It matches and perfectly aligns. There's no other waffle or extra stuff in it that I don't need. It's really clever. Not to mention, this also helps your SEO, your search engine optimization. Now, even with all the social media channels that we have, over 80% of people still go to Google to type in questions to find answers, to look for people like you. So they're typing these questions into Google. If you have got a page on the internet <laughs> that's related to your mini training with that exact question as the title, Google is going to match that person's question with your page. Ding, meaning you get more traffic, which means you get more sales. I'm really loving this mini course approach at the moment. Um, and, and again, it has knock on benefits because as these mini courses grow, you can start popping them into a bucket, which can later become a membership where people can pay to access all of your mini courses, all of your training for a monthly fee. So it's also building a secondary product later on for you. So we've got a lead magnet, one type of course. We've got a mini course as another type of course. The next one is what I call an authority flagship 
course. Now, an authority flagship is basically the big mama course that I was talking about. Now, even though I just said that people prefer mini courses, it does not mean that big courses are dead. Not at all. Look at that market again, that triangle that I drew before. There will always be some people that want short, sharp and fast. There will always be people that want the give me everything. There will always be people that are let me do it by myself. And there will always be people that are like, let me do it with you. So <laughs> same here is just because short courses are more popular does not mean that a big course won't sell at all. So you can create what's called an authority flagship. This is your every single thing you know about your topic thrown into one course. Now note that I just said everything that you know about your topic, not everything that exists on earth about your topic. Okay, your course here is not um, you know, everything in the world, every encyclopedia page on your topic, it's what you know about your topic. The next, so I forgot to say, forgot to say pricing for this. So with an authority flagship, at this stage, we're talking self-study. This is a completely online self-study version of everything you know about your topic. Your students are going to come out the other side of this feeling as much of an expert as you are. It may include downloads, worksheets, templates, and more checklists and so on. Now, with this type of self-study course, the cool thing about this type of style is it's evergreen, meaning it's open all of the time. Students can enroll whenever they want. It's always open because it's completely self-enroll, self-study, self-complete. So you're always going to have money, money trickling through from this and you're not having to constantly go through launches and big launch off. Launch, launch mode is exhausting if you're doing that all of the time. <laughs> so that's some benefits. But even though this is an evergreen type of course, I would still recommend that you give me as the student a rough guide as to how long it should take me to complete it. Why? Because I don't know about you, <laughs> but most of us buy courses online, forget that they exist and never complete them. We think, oh, you know, I've got forever to complete that now that I've bought it. I'll get to that eventually. Hands up who's been guilty of that. They've got courses sat there <laughs> on their digital drive, collecting digital dust, and they just don't get taken. So even if I buy your course and I can take it whenever I like, and I've got access to it for life, I would still recommend that you break it down into a rough timeline so that then you can use automation behind the scenes to check in with me throughout the duration of that program to encourage me to complete the course. More course completions means more results, which means more testimonials to happy customers and more repeat buying. So I, for example, would recommend based on people's current uh, attention spans and what is currently where completion rates drop off with online learning, I recommend that you keep your online courses to no more than four to six weeks. After the six week period, and I'm talking about what's trending right now, this is where your retention rates and your completion rates completely drop off. After four to six weeks, people just disappear. They lose interest, other stuff becomes more important, other stuff takes over their sphere of priorities and you lose people. I recommend for a course like this, you say, I know that you have access to this forever. You can complete it whenever you want. However, we recommend you do module one in week one. We recommend you do module two in week two. And so on four modules finish on the fourth week because you're going to push people through using those email automations behind the scenes. And it's going to make more people finish your course and get the results from them. So pricing wise, this is where, you, again, this isn't what you should charge for your course. I'm going to tell you what's roughly converting at the moment for a roughly four to six week totally self-study course. Okay, so that, let's keep that bit in mind. The rough conversion price for this is anything from $97 to up to $1,500. Okay, so just keep that in mind. That's roughly what's highest converting. Of course, you can charge less. Of course, you can charge much more. That's just the average um, price in the market right now. If you've got questions, do keep dropping those in the chat and I will come back to those as we go along. All right, the next type of online course you can create, and by the way, step one is the biggest section. The others are going to fly through much faster, <laughs> is your coaching program. A coaching program, this is the exciting part, 
is your authority flagship, but plus you. A coaching program is where you now become involved in the process. You are now either delivering, for instance, group training. Uh, in my concept to course program, for instance, I give my students some self-study videos to watch in each module. And each week we have a live training where I go through and teach the really important learnings for that module, as well as really up-to-date current trending information that wasn't in the pre-recorded content. So that live training adds to the self-study elements, but also gives your students the opportunity to ask you questions, to um, say, but what about this particular context? What about my situation? How do I apply what you've just taught to me? They really want you and your advice at this stage. Perhaps you have one-on-ones in this coaching program. Perhaps you have a community, either a community, private community area, like we have in Techmatics, or a Facebook group, that's where your audience more hang out. But basically what you're doing in this stage is taking that content that you may have had in the authority flagship self-study course, but you're recreating a version of it that now involves the coach-led element to it, where you now become involved in hand-holding, mentoring, and supporting people through the process. And there will always be people that want to do it on their own, and there will always be people that can and will only do it with a coach by their side, spurring them on, giving them that accountability and that has that community element to it so that they feel like they're not alone whilst they're doing it. That's another type of program. Now, coaching programs, the pricing for this will vary dramatically, again, depending on what you're teaching your expertise and experience, how long you're doing it, and more importantly, how much of your personal time you are putting into the program. So the first question I want you to write down on your piece of paper is, what is your hourly rate? What is your hourly rate? And if you're going, I'm not sure. <laughs> For a start, can I tell you, it, please don't be charging less than $182, $200 an hour. If you are a coach or a consultant, you're charging less than that. People are going to wonder why you are so cheap. <laughs> All right. So please be at least more than that. Um, believe in yourself, right? The, the, the money that you're going to save people in wasted time, in confusion, in despair, in distress, in not knowing where to start and not being able to move forward is going to be considerably more than 200 bucks, I hope. <laughs> All right. So please believe in the value that you can bring in, in helping people and saving them time, saving them problems, saving them stress. So, and again, just like an authority flagship, um, I would recommend there is a time period to a coaching program. And in fact, I, was, I would go as far as saying that you should have a very strict start and end date for a coach-led program for a number of reasons. First of all, for your marketing. Coaching programs tend to sell out better when there is an active launch that promotes it, really hypes it up at the beginning, gets everybody in to start together on day one. Everyone moves through in a process together through the steps and completes together. Having a timeline creates action. It really creates inertia. It gives people a sense of urgency to complete. You do get higher results. This is the whole point of a coaching program, right? Being pushed, being guided, being supported, being stepped along the journey. Two, the other reason why this is important is for your own mental, emotional, and physical health. Right? Coaching programs can be very, very exhausting. I personally put all of myself into my coaching programs. Everything else gets put to the side. When I'm running my group coaching program, the people in that program are my number one priority for that entire 30-day period. And so I only run mine twice a year so that I can do the biggest launches and so that I can give all of myself for two months of the year to those individuals. And they are all that matter to me in those 30 days. And I'm there 24 seven to support them through the process. So <clears throat> this is a really smart way for you to get the best results for people, do the best marketing so that you're getting the best results from your signups, but also so that you are managing your energy at the same time. The cool thing about your finishing your coaching program, having a deadline is that you also don't have those hanger honors 
that just drag on and on and on and on. And after a while, they're becoming a sap on your time. They're not getting results and you're starting to lose money in the amount of time that you're spending on those individuals. What I actually do with my coaching program is I say, this is the end of the program. Congratulations. It's done. <laughs> if you do want to hang around, uh, come and join my membership because in my membership, I'm there for you always every step along the way um, as part of that membership. So you can on sell uh, a kind of another program later on. Now, pricing wise, once you've worked out this hourly rate I was mentioning, you can then start to calculate how many hours of my time am I going to put into my coaching program? You know, it might be that one live call a week. It's going to be an extra couple of hours to prepare that live call, for instance. How much time are you going to put into your community if you're going to have one? Um, you don't have to have one, but if you're going to have one, are you going to spend an hour a day in there? Are you going to spend five hours a day in there? Right? How much are you, time are you going to put into your program? Again, there's no right or wrong in how you choose to show up for your audience. As long as you are explicitly clear in your sales page how much of you they get, that's fine. As long as they know and they've got that understanding um, up front. You will then need to obviously add up all of those hours. And that's the minimum you need to make in order to make a profit from your coaching program. So roughly speaking, um, the highest converting coaching programs for a 21 day to a 30 day type coaching program. Again, just like self-study, please don't make a coaching program longer than eight weeks today. In a few years, sorry, in, in the olden days, a few years ago, I would have said to you, you can you can stretch out a coaching program for up to 12 months. Really, guys, you will have a massive dropout rate if you do that today. I would recommend you really hyper focus on an immersion and intensive for 21 days, 30 days, six weeks, eight weeks max, and really push on getting people massive results in that time and then moving them to a membership. Uh, thereafter. So with that in mind, for a 21 day to a, an eight week program, you could be looking at anything from $300 to $10,000 plus a ticket, depending on the result they're coming away with. Okay, how do your audience value the results that you're bringing? Now going back to the market, the triangle that we talked about earlier, with a coaching program, you can create tiered tickets. So you might have a cheaper ticket to access that coaching program for, say, only a short period of time. Uh, you may have a really high ticket for that coaching program where you do something for them. So if I give you an, an idea of how I do this with my concept of course program, I have a lower price ticket option that actually came about because people said, I really want to join, but I don't want all of the stuff you offer. Um, so for example, in my concept of course program, um, they get uh, 12 months access to concept of course. They get to take two rounds of concept of course, because I was noticing a lot of people come the first time round to create a mini course. And then they come back a second time around to create their coaching program or their membership. Um, they get loads of other stuff, but basically they get this kind of a uh, bonus of three months access to my entire entrepreneur academy, blah, blah, blah. My plus package, I do stuff for them. So anyone who joins my plus package, they get lifetime access to Concept of Course. They can join unlimited rounds of Concept of Course. They get a um, much longer period in my entrepreneur academy. But the most important part, I set up all of their course tech for them. I set up their whole online school for them. We set up their online course for them. We create all of their email automations and their course landing page for them. We create their coaching calendar appointment booking system for them. So it's all done. So we can obviously charge a much higher price for this because they're basically taking away years and years of, of time. We What would cost probably up to $10,000, $15,000 through web developers, we're doing for an absolute no-brainer price. So looking at your own coaching program, could you offer, you know, like a baby bear, a mummy bear, and a daddy bear price for having different access options in your program for your coaching? Very clever way to be able to help people at all those different stages of the market. Okay, so in different types of courses, we've got lead magnet, we've got a mini course, we've got an authority flagship self study course, we've got a coaching program. And then the next and final one I want to talk about here is a membership. This is another type of course delivery format you could pick from. This is when people are charging you a monthly fee to access whatever it is that you have chosen to put inside your membership. 
So let me tell you this, here's the other super exciting thing, <laughs> is a membership can simply be access to you once a month. My Edupreneur Academy actually started in exactly this way many years ago. Um, it was just a live monthly Q&A call with me. And back then, I think it was about $250, $300 for a one hour call with me one on one. Or you could join my membership for just $47 and get that anyway. So it became a no brainer for people to join my membership to have that live call because it was only a fraction of the price of having a one on one with me. And they could still come and ask me absolutely anything. So you can literally go into your calendar booking system right now. If you're using Techmatics, there's a calendar system in there um, that you can just go and create a recurring Zoom meeting and simply have, for instance, I do mine the first Thursday of every month is a live call with me. There's your membership right there. It's already a no brainer because it's you that people want. It's you they want to ask questions. Oh, hey, Dave, how do you do this? How do I do this? What do I do in this situation? Boom, no brainer. As you create more content, you can keep dropping that content into your membership. Remember when I was talking about the mini courses? Every time you create one of these little 45 minute sessions, you drop that into the membership it becomes more and more valuable over time for those members, which is amazing. Now, roughly speaking, guys, a membership uh, today is, is roughly converting the highest to anything from $7 a month to $200 a month. That's a very rough uh, average. Again, not saying that yours has to be that price. I'm just telling you roughly what most memberships tend to go for at the moment. And you can get super creative with these. Some memberships are just live calls. Some memberships and lots and lots of pre-recorded content. Some memberships, it might not even be you teaching. You could just bring in a guest expert every single week to deliver a workshop. I'm telling you now, there are plenty of experts out there who are more than willing to deliver a live workshop for an hour, totally free of charge, without you having to pay them, provided that they can promote something at the end. Uh, it may be that you send them a gift. It may be, I've got some people who are doing memberships with me who work in the mindset field, who for instance, send out a daily meditation or a daily mantra or a daily um, motivational tip. We have people doing memberships that send out a book summary uh, once a month. We have people who send out gift boxes once a month. The sky is truly the limit at how creative you can be about what might be in your membership and how you can put that together. Now, some other things I do have up on my screen here is um, some done with you and done for you experiences. So for example, could you deliver your thing that we're talking about the higher end here as a retreat or an in-person boot camp where I get to come away with you for three days, two days, a weekend, somewhere luxurious. And by the time I leave that amazing two days with you, the expert, I have not only an experience to remember for the rest of my life, but what have I got done? I finished something that I couldn't do at home because I can't focus and the kids are running around like maniacs, right? It, I get to come away and really focus on this thing that I want to work on. Um, these are amazing. And these are where your real high ticket pricing come in. Uh, those are fantastic. The other thing you can have is kind of done for you services. So what could you do for people? What could you just completely take off of my plate? If you're a nutrition, make me a personalized food plan. If you are a Facebook ads expert, do my ads for me. If you are a social media professional you know create my content for me there's lots of different things that you can do on my behalf that again I would pay high ticket money for so that was the biggest step guys the there I see a lot of people just jump straight into creating a course which they think is just a bunch of videos thrown together once you have worked this out which one of these types of courses most makes you excited most turns you on lights up your fire makes you think yes I really want to do that that's the type of course you want to focus on. Now, if you haven't got a lead magnet yet, please make that your first type of product you put together. Um, if there is one on here that stands out, make that your hero product. So as an example, guys, I have all of these types of courses, but I have one that is my hero. My hero is my membership because 
for me, that's the one where I get to be the most creative. I have the most amount of joy. I get to create the most amount of stuff. It is the most passive model I have, which suits me as a mum with two young kids, somebody who travels a lot and lives in remote Australia. That is just for me, my hero product. So no matter what I do, no matter which part of this customer journey people come in on for me, I always direct them to my membership as my hero product. For you, I want you to just write down now in the comments, which one is your hero product? Even if you want all of these, pick the one that's like you're going to be your absolute standout. Maybe for you, it's a coaching program that's going to be your number one thing that you want everyone to go to. Um, maybe out of all of these, you're going to, you might do all of them, uh, but it's the retreats or boot camps you want to do. So let me know in the comments, which is your hero product and keep that in mind as we go through. So again, you might choose to just have one of these types of courses. You may choose over time to build out a version of your expertise in all of these delivery formats to help every stage of the market. All right, step number two for creating a course. Once you know what type of course you're gonna create, you've now got an idea of the size of them, the duration of them and the rough pricing of them and the order that you're gonna put them together. Step number two for creating your course is then picking the topic for that type of course. Here's the exciting bit. You can have unlimited topics, guys, right? There is no course police that is telling you, you must pick one topic and stick to that for the rest of your life. You have to tattoo that with dragon's blood on your face and only talk about that thing for the rest of time. Absolutely not. You just need to pick what topic you're going to go with for your first one. Most of you crazy entrepreneurs are serial topickers anyway, and you, uh, you love to talk about lots of different things. Uh, I'm a classic example. My core area of expertise is course creation. But over time, I became an expert in marketing because I had to learn how to market my courses. Over time, I became an expert in digital tech, specifically ed tech, course tech, because I had to immerse myself in it 24 hours a day to get good at what I do and so other people started saying how do you do email marketing how did you do um, organic marketing how did you build your following I started answering those questions around my core topic so for you what is your core topic and I highly recommend if you want to stand out in your field if you want to become a leader in your industry please pick a core topic that you then can be super creative and build external subsequent topics around that's going to be the best way for you to go about this. But um, then you're going to want to get yourself a piece of paper. If you're not still not sure which of the million things that I love to do, should I start teaching about first? First of all, guys, make your first course something that you could teach with your eyes closed, something that you've been talking about for years, the thing that's absolutely going to be easiest for you to put together, because whilst you're busy learning a new thing, how to create a course, you don't also want to be researching. OK, you want to go with the thing that you're most confident in. So I recommend for this exercise, get yourself a piece of paper right now, a whole A4 piece of paper and just put two lines on it so that you have three columns. So create three columns on your piece of paper. In column one, please put do, D-O, do. In column two, please put no, as in knowledge, K-N-O-W, no. And on the third column, please put feelings okay so by the end of your course how do you want people to feel what do you want them to know and what do you want them to be able to do this is the first place to begin um, with your with your particular topic what things do you love what things are you good at what things do you have experience in these are three more columns I want you to create and start brainstorming start brainstorming and from there you're going to start to get a really good idea of your skills, your knowledge, your experience, the things that you've been through in your life that are going to help you help other people. So going to it, I just want to pull out the experience thing as well. You don't have to be qualified to teach your area of expertise. What can qualify you more than a piece of paper quite often are the things that you have been through in your life. Because when it comes to creating a course or a coaching program, what you are not doing is saying, here are all of the things that everyone has ever taught in this topic. No, no, no. What you want to do to stand out is say, here are all the things that I have learned, that I have done to get from zero to hero in my thing. Here are all the ways that I have worked towards my successes. 
here are all the methods that I have tried and tested that work for me. And that is all your course needs to be. This is you, you're not poo-pooing anyone else's methods or ideas. You're not proclaiming to know everything about your field. You're simply saying, here is Sarah's 10 steps for creating a course. Here are my methods for creating a course. There are lots of other ways to create one, but here is Sarah's way. And in this course, I'm gonna show you how I have helped thousands of people over the last decade plus to create courses. It's my way, okay? It's gonna take away imposter syndrome. <laughs> so by using what you love, what you're good at, and what you have both life experience and formal experience in, it's going to really help you find that magic place for your particular course topic. And remember, it's about you, your way, your experience, not someone else's. And this is really going to help that imposter syndrome slip away into the corner because you're not proclaiming to be the best, to have the best way or the only way. You're just saying, this is my way. And that's cool. <laughs> All right. Step number three is you now want to make sure that your course is gonna sell. So first of all, let me tell you this. Your course will sell if you market it. Gone are the days, unfortunately, where a course would sell itself. Once upon a time, you literally could put a post on Facebook and you would sell. <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. You, your course will only sell to the level at which you market or don't market it. The more marketing you do, the more sales you make. That is the formula, guys. That's the secret to success. <laughs> if you are marketing and you know who you are marketing to, you will sell your course. It's as simple as that. Marketing sells courses. Um, however, you can do a few things to check that you have the highest chance possible of selling the most amount of courses possible. The first thing you want to do is check, are people talking about it? Then are people asking questions about it? And then is it trending? And usually what we find when we start doing what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a couple of tools right now for you to find out whether your idea is going to sell. Usually what it comes down to when I have people come to me and say, Sarah, help me. I've got this course and I've not made a single sale. What's wrong with my course? What's wrong with me? Do I need to refilm it? Did I waste my time creating this? It's usually nothing to do with the course and everything to do with one word that they're using in the title. It's not the same word that the market are typing into Google. And I have genuinely had people who have been trying to sell their course for months, haven't made a single sale. All I've done for them in that consult is changed one word in their course title and it's gone on to sell like hotcakes. So it, it, marketing doesn't have to be as hard as we think it is, guys. We just have to go, what are people asking for? And you answer that question. What do people want? Give it to them. That is all sales is. How do we know what they're asking? Glad you asked. First thing we're going to do, guys, is check whether our topic is trending, first of all. The best way for you to do that is to go to Google and type in Google Trends. Okay, type in Google Trends. This is a completely free tool by Google that will show you the popularity of a topic since Google existed, which was 2004 when it began. Now you're going to, in this box here, in this big box in the middle, type in your course topic. So I'm just gonna look at the chat, drop in what your course topic is in the chat box. Mm -mm -mm. What's your topic? Drop it in the chat box. Okay, we've got someone who teaches French. We've got someone who teaches about anxiety, how to do empowered leadership. Awesome, loving it. Okay, so, so many different course topics here. Um, I am going to pick, I'm gonna pick anxiety. So um, let's pretend your topic is about anxiety. Anxiety, type in your topic, press explore. Now what it's gonna do, first of all, is we need to just change some filters on here. The first thing we're gonna change is the location. We want to pick worldwide. Why? Because you're going out to the whole wide world. Second thing you're gonna change is the timeline. We want to pick the history from when Google started collecting data. So let's pick 2004 to present. 
Whoa, okay, this is a very good topic to create a course on. What we are looking for in this result, you're gonna get three types of results. The first one that you're going to get is a flat line. If you have a flat line, flat is good. Ding! Why is flat good? Flat means this is a very consistent topic. It means it's evergreen. These are topics that human beings are always going to be interested in. So for example, we, I can't, I can't see my screen here. Can you still see my face presenting? No. You can't? Just look forward. Okay, cool, there we go. Um, these are good, they're topics like leadership, relationships, sex, success, career, money, wealth, all these kinds of things, health, all that kind of stuff is an evergreen topic. Humans are always going to be interested in these core human need topics, okay? So this is cool. Um, this is a, a flat line to good. The other type of line you're going to see is one like we've got on this screen, which is a massive go ahead sign, which is a line that is trending upwards. A line that's trending up means it is being searched for higher and in higher and in higher volumes. This is a big fat double ding ding. Great topic idea. If you market this, you make it, it's going to sell. All right. <laughs> so the other thing we're going to have is a downwards line. A downwards line mm -mm, doesn't mean that your course topic is bad, that your course won't sell. It means you're using the wrong word. Let me give you a real life example. When I first created uh, one of my courses, how to create profitable online courses, it was called how to do curriculum design and development. <laughs> do you want to know how many people wanted to do that? Oh, there was about two guys. Um, there was about two guys in Pakistan who were doing a degree in curriculum design and development university. <laughs> and what I was like, what, what's going on? Why doesn't anyone want to learn about curriculum design and development? This is amazing. And I went onto Google, uh, not to Google, I went to some Facebook groups and said, hey, um, this is what I do. I teach people how to create courses. Uh, what would you search for on Google? And they said, well, I would search for how to create a course. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm really overcomplicating this. <laughs> so I changed my title from how to do curriculum design and development to how to create an online course. Bing, my sales went through the roof. <laughs> Why? Because that's exactly what people were typing into Google. Sales and marketing is simply knowing what people are asking and answering it. Ding, marriage. <laughs> so what we're going to do now, while you're in Google Trends, I also want you to think of other words that might be used by your audience, because we're going to do a couple of other things here to check. Is anxiety the best word? I don't know. Let's talk about what else comes with anxiety. Um, let's talk about worry. Okay, enter. This is now going to tell us that, oh, worry is way lower on the graph. It's definitely a massively higher trending topic. It's going up, but it's got way lower search volume. So we're not going to use the word worry. Um, let's also, I, I don't know too much about um, Michelle's topic here, but I'm going to say um, maybe something else that people might get is burnout when they, um, when they're Michelle might be teaching about this, okay? Uh, this also is a very evergreen topic, right? It's a lovely flat line, that's a good sign. But again, it's got a much lower search volume than anxiety. So I, I would add a few different versions or words or phrases to see which one has the highest search volume. This tells me not only is this topic definitely a go because it's got high market demand and it's trending, it's also telling me that the word anxiety definitely needs to be in my title of my course okay because that's have the highest search amazing what else can we do to make sure our course sells well the other thing we want to do now is go all right we know whether our topic what we've got the right words now we know that let's go and find out what questions people are actually asking in google right now so that we know what to include in our course so this is my favorite tool. It's called answerthepublic.com. What this does is it curates all of the top questions and key phrases that people are typing into Google right now so that you can see exactly what people want to know right now. And if they're Googling this right now, it means the answers are needed right now and your course is gonna sell if it's answering these questions. How affirming is this? So in this box, type in your topic. I'm going to type in anxiety. Let's go with this example. Change the location to the US 
Why? Because you can't pick worldwide at the moment. Um, and the US is just going to give us the biggest uh, search results for the kind of markets we're going for. Hit enter. And what this is going to do now is just uh, do a little search and pick the really high volume searches in this area. Give it a second to load. I'll quickly sip some water while that's doing it. And here we go, 735 results. That's 735 high search phrases. That's about, that's like 700 courses right there already. So we're gonna scroll through. You'll see you've got this beautiful graph, but I'm gonna just change this to the data view so it's easier to read. Here are the questions. Are anxiety and panic attacks the same? Are panic attacks and also oh, is anxiety are anxiety and depression related? How does anxiety affect the brain? How does anxiety work? How does it affect sleep? Does it cause stomach pain? Does it cause heart palpitations? Does it make you throw up? When does anxiety attack? When is anxiety too much? When you know there's all these questions. This is what actual real people, your target audience, are typing in right now. Please stop waiting until I've got an audience. Please stop waiting until it's perfect. Please stop waiting until some magical day when. People are searching now. Grab your Zoom, grab your webcam, press live and start answering these questions. This is how you start. This is how you create something for people to follow. This is how you make money, create your product. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to answer some of these questions and then you can start building up your audience because people have something and someone to follow. You're proving to people that you are who you say you are. This is where you start becoming a leader in your field. You cannot sit around, guys, and wait for somebody to give you the throne and say, congratulations on this Monday. I proclaim you the leader of your industry. It doesn't work like that. You have to build your own throne. How do you build your own throne as a leader in your field? You start being the leader in your field. How do you be the leader in your field? You simply be the most helpful person in it. You help, you lead people who are the most respected, admired, fangirled person in their industry are the ones who are helping the most people. And helping people is free. You do not need a marketing team. You do not need a budget. You do not need a thousand followers. You just need an internet connection, a vaguely good webcam or just a phone. And you need to just press go live or record and start answering these questions. So what I do, what I've done, how I've built my, I didn't even have these tools when I started, right? It's even easier for you than it was for me. <laughs> All I do is um, there's actually this little arrow button on the top right of, of uh, Answer the Public. Press the little arrow. It will export it for you into a CSV file. What? You can download this as an Excel sheet. And all I do is I highlight in yellow all the ones that I can answer now. What do you do with the ones you can't answer? Save them for later. Ignore them. Right. You only need to answer the questions you can answer right now. If I was sat in a pub with you, if I was sat in the cafe with you and I asked you one of these questions, how would you answer it to me? If you and I were sat here with our coffees on a park bench and I said, hey, Michelle, um, like are anxiety and panic attacks the same? How would you answer it? Right, You wouldn't sit and go, hang on, Sarah, I just need to write a script to answer this question. I just need to put on my makeup and I need to uh, go and get a film crew. I need to wait until I have a thousand followers before I can answer this question. Of course you wouldn't. You'd be like, oh, you, do you get panic attacks? Well, you know, a lot of people who get them, usually they come because of anxiety. Some people feel, you know, you would just answer. You'd just be like, you know, here's what I do. Here are some things that you can do. You would chat to me with your coffee in your hand, have a conversation. That's all you have to do, guys. <laughs> stop making, stop thinking you have to turn into a newsreader um, to be a helpful guy. To be a helpful guy, all you got to do is imagine you're talking to a real person, a friend. Uh, and what would you say to that friend or that person if you were sat there with coffees in hand, sharing your advice and your love and your care and your passion for your topic? We overcomplicate this a lot and it's stopping a lot of you changing people's lives and it's stopping a lot of you making the money that you deserve today with what you have. 
they're just a couple of ways, guys. There are a lot more ways to find what questions people are asking. Inside my Concept of Course program, I walk you through all of those so that you have a never ending source of high demand questions to answer. All right, step number four of creating your online course is to um, use the content gathering methods that I recommend to go out and seek all of the different kinds of information that you could include in your answers, selecting and gathering the actual information itself. So once we've gone through answer the public, once we've gone through some of the other methods I use for finding the questions people are asking, you can go and do some other data collection methods. Now, we all know our friend AI, <laughs> it's here. You can certainly use this to help you come up with more content ideas for your course. So one of the things that I often ask in here is go down to ChatGPT. Um, I'd stick it on ChatGPT4 if I were you, the highest version, and simply type in what, uh, or list, sorry, I prefer list the top 50, oh, so top 100, I'd say, but I'm going to put top 10. Listen, the top 100 most common questions about, and then hit your topic. Okay, I would say 100 because it's going to give you lots more stuff. So what's your topic? I'm going to type in course creation. Boom. This is now going to give you even more questions to answer, not only in your marketing, but also inside your course, all right? This is gonna scrape all the questions that are being typed into Google at the moment, only up until 2021, but in most cases, those questions will still certainly be relevant to human beings today. So there you go, it's gonna pop out all of those. Now, another method that you can use is um, what I call listicles. I'm just gonna stop generating this to save my internet power. Listicles with an L, your cheeky things. Listicles is list articles. Uh, many of you may have seen these, you know, like 21 ways to lose weight, five ways to have a better sex life, three ways to become a better leader, 10 ways to improve your ad copy, right? Listicles are a number of ways to do something. So what you're going to do is type in to Google ways to, now, first of all, it will actually give you um, some examples of what people are typing into Google, but ways to, and then your topic. So ways to, and then let's type in anxiety, because I'm going to carry on with this example here, ways to anxiety. Now scroll down and you're going to find all of the posts, 11 tips for coping with anxiety. Um, skip through to the next page. Uh, seven anxiety hacks, 10 natural remedies for anxiety. You're going to go through and look at these listicles. Now, what are we doing here? First of all, not only are we finding content, because as we scroll through here, we're seeing and we're getting tip ideas, we're getting content ideas for our course. The other thing we're doing is actually verifying the market demand again at the same time. Why? Because <laughs> this result for anxiety has six, 634 million results. So if these results are on the first few pages, they are extremely high demand, high traffic, highly consumed and highly clicked content, which is going to be assuring for us as the course creator that our market really like what's in here. Because this is ranking number one, number two, number three, out of 634 million pieces of content on this topic. Often this reminds us just how simple our content needs to be. The curse of knowledge for any educator is that we overcomplicate all of the time. We forget what it was like to not know our topic. And so we think that we have to create increasingly more complex and advanced stuff at a PhD level. We're not teaching PhD level. We're teaching what we know to people who don't know it yet. And looking at these questions and all of these sources of content information is a really reaffirming reassuring reminder of just how much we need to go back to basics with our delivery. I have been teaching this exact same presentation for about nine years, probably 10. This first 10 steps was created. I am still teaching it a decade later.
albeit some of the tips have changed to meet technology and the tech that we have available. But there are still going to always be a flood of, of people that are coming to your topic. All right. Always going to be new people looking to learn about your particular thing. Now, there are lots of other ways that you can search for content. I'm not going to go into those in too much detail today because we're running out of time. But if you go and grab my free training, sarahcordon.com forward slash free stuff, um, you, or, or the starter kit that you see on the screen here, um, you will have all of this in much more detail. All right, step number five for creating an online course is once you have collected all of these questions and all of these content ideas that could be included in your course, the first thing I want you to do is take stuff out. <laughs> One of the most smart ways to streamline your, your course, to make it good, is what you take out of it, what you remove. Repetitiveness, fluffiness, stuff that doesn't directly get people to the outcome that you have promised. I mean, to take out everything that you could save for another course. What can you take out and make mini courses for later on? Make this course as highly focused on getting one particular result or outcome or transformation as possible. Once you've removed what you think can be saved for other courses later, now with what's left, I want you to group them together into little families. A couple of ways that you can do this. One method that I personally still love to this day is writing all of the questions that I want to keep in my course onto pieces of post-its. One question per post-it note, because that makes it really easy to stick to just get yourself a massive window or something and group together the tips that all kind of feel like they fit together as a family the questions that feel like they fit together in families. The other method that you can use is using a Trello board where you can create these columns and group together the questions that feel like they just naturally fit together. As an example, if you were teaching nutrition, or let's stick with the anxiety example here, um, you know, you might have a group of questions that um, are the answers are going to revolve around exercise for beating anxiety. You may have a group of questions that are going to revolve around the physio physiological responses and biological responses in the body in regards to anxiety. You may have a bunch that relate to food that you're eating or nutrition and diet when it comes to anxiety. So you can see here by looking at those questions and knowing roughly what your answers are going to be, that you can start grouping them together. And these little groups, these families of tips or questions, they become your modules. It's as simple as that. Now, I always get asked, how many modules should be in a course and how many lessons should be in a module? A module is the group. The lessons are the individual questions that you're answering. You do not need to have an equal amount of lessons in your modules. I'm sorry, my OCD friends. I know you love it to look so even and equal <laughs> from a curriculum design perspective, guys. All modules are, are ways to organize similar content. All right, so please don't think I have to have exactly 10 lessons in each module. No, some lessons might be answered in one, sorry, might, some modules might have one lesson in, right? Because that's all it took to answer that section to get people to the result you're taking them to. Some modules might have 20 lessons in it, right? It's just to organize similar content. Please don't add extra not needed stuff just to try and make your modules look even that's not how curriculum design works all right so now you've got yourself everything organized in module one module two module three and you've moved your lessons around in the order that you would like them delivered the next step from there is then to decide how you're going to teach it now I guys recommend that because this is a course it's an educational program that you use video to deliver your training I see so many people putting all of the stuff they know about their topic into a PDF, chucking it online and calling it a course. Guys, a bunch of PDFs and downloads is not a course. It's a bunch of PDFs. If you signed up for a university degree and the university just sent you a bunch of PDFs, I think you'd be slightly annoyed. Right? You could have just, you could have just gone to the library, right? Courses have a facilitator. An education program is 
facilitated in some capacity by an expert. So at least 70% of your program should be delivered via video. And I know that some of you would rather go to the dentist than go on camera. You will get used to it. You have been talking to other human beings your whole life. You are not incapable of talking. You are not incapable of answering questions about your topic. However, your body will go through physiological responses the first few times you stare down the barrel of a lens because it's something that's new and unfamiliar, right? You will get used to it. The more you put yourself in front of that camera, the more your body realizes you're not in danger, the more it's going to stop the flood of chemicals that are telling you to run away. Your cognitive processing will begin to function. I know that when we go into fight or flight mode, one of the physiological responses our body has is that we stop thinking um, at, at, a, at a you know advanced cognitive level because our body's going run away. <laughs> so yes, you will forget your own name. You will forget how to put any words one in front of the other in any kind of understandable, comprehensible order. But <laughs> after your body's flood of chemicals going through your going through you subside because it's realizing that you're not in danger, you will begin to relax. The cognitive functioning will start to kick in. And even to this day, after 10 years of presenting to camera and having done thousands of videos, I still need to warm up. Well, so I did some videos this morning. Uh, Febby sat next to me now, she'll tell you. I, I couldn't even put, I couldn't even speak. <laughs> I kept mucking up all my words because I needed to warm my brain up, all right? It's, you still need to sit in front of that camera, even if you sit there and just talk about what you had for breakfast for 20 minutes until your brain starts waking up. You do get there. So please make at least 70% of your video, your video, your course video format. And please also note this. Please do a big star and note this in your book. Any supplemental resources that you add to your courses should be additional complementary resources not the delivery method what do i mean by that your if you're adding for instance a workbook please don't make the workbook the 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 learning they you you shouldn't have to tell someone to read that in order to learn what they need to learn the videos should teach them everything they need to learn the workbook that comes with it is a resource to help them implement the learning the doing maybe it's got the exercises in there maybe it's got a box for them to do some journaling right what the the resources that you attach the worksheets the downloads which by the way you don't have to have in a course um if that's going to help the person get the result you promised it should be complementary to what's being taught in the videos, not the delivery method itself. OK, just keep that in mind. Step number seven for creating your online course is, well, you're going to want to sell it, right? So you're going to need a landing page of some kind. Now, don't freak out. Landing pages today are super easy to create a platform uh, that you obviously will have heard me talk about is Techmatics. We have pre-made course landing pages, templates made for you. All you've got to do is change the colors and the logos and paste in your text to sell your course onto it. Um, you can also get my team to do it for, for you from as little as $150. If you want us to create your landing pages for you, do shoot me a message. But basically, um, creating the copy today is super easy. Now I have a slide here that has an exact prompt that you can type into ChatGPT to help you create your course landing page. What? So I'm going to read it out to you. However, if you want to get the slides for this, you can email me on sarah at sarahcordina.com. Okay. If you email me on sarah at sarahcordina.com, or get my free course creation starter kit, I will give you these slides so you can um, get this exact prompt. But I'm going to read it out to you. Here's what the prompt is to get ChatGPT to create your, your landing page for your course. I am a field of expertise job role. So for instance, I am a course creation specialist or a course creation consultant. I help target audience get X results so mine would be, I help entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, and course creators create an online course. 
Then you're going to tell ChatGPT about your product or service as much as possible. So for instance, you might say, I'm going to create a four-week coaching program on anxiety. I am targeting entrepreneurs who are busy, overworked, and burnt out, and are feeling anxious about promoting themselves online. I don't know, that may be what your course is about. Um, then you're going to say, um, list some secret emotional, financial, and internal and external desires that this audience might have in relation to the topic. Then tell it which ones you think your audience most likely have, and then say, with all of this chat in mind, now write me um, a persuasive, professional, emotional, funny, whatever word you want, copy for the sales page to sell my four-week coaching program on anxiety. Boom, including the learning outcomes and headlines. This will give you everything you need as a perfect skeleton for the content that's going to go on your landing page. It's going to write emotional, emotions-based desires, pain points, and uh, you know, real goal outcome copy that's going to persuade people to buy. And because you've put in here, include the learning outcomes, it's also going to list exactly what your course is about. Now, you can also then take it a next step further. Once you've got that structure, then add in all of the titles of your lessons and modules that you've now come up with and say, here are the titles of my modules and lessons. Now rewrite this landing page with this in mind, and it will rewrite it based on what your course is going to teach. So again, Again, if you would like this slide, these slides for free, um, just send me an email on sarah at sarahcordina.com. Okay, that's going to give you your landing page. Next thing is you're going to have to actually start filming. <laughs> Please don't wait until you've got the perfect haircut or you've, you know, you've got the perfect nails done. Please don't wait until you've got the perfect background. I'm doing this live in an Airbnb <laughs> with my laptop and a funny setup by a window, right? Please guys, that all you need is your knowledge. All people want are the answers to the questions. Do you go to an expert for a Hollywood production? You don't, you go to Fleep and Netflix or the movies for a Hollywood production. When you go to an expert, all you want from me is me to answer your questions. You're like, please, Sarah, I need to know this. Just answer it. <laughs> you don't care how many pixels my retina is. Uh, oh, look at my eyeball. I've, just, I've got this perfect equipment. No, you don't care about that. You don't care if I've got a pop-up that goes bing. You don't care if I've got an interactive video that gives you a quiz halfway through. No, you just want me to answer your questions. So guys, Piece of equipment number one, this is a studio right here. If this is all you have, this is all you need. If you don't have one of these mobile phones, I'm sure you just go and borrow one from a teenager. You've got to know a teenager that has one of these. Okay, if you have got this, you can create your online courses and all of your social media marketing content today. Quit mucking around, putting it off. <laughs> Guys, all you need is a big window. Face a window. This is my filming studio right now is a window. That's all I have in front of me so that you can see my face. A window and your mobile phone is perfectly sufficient. If you want to ramp it up one, um, you can get yourself a selfie ring light with a mobile phone holder. They are about $10 in the Kmarts and the Walmarts. Okay, they're so cheap right now. If you do also want to take it up a, a, a level, um, you're going to want to have a microphone. And these uh, you can get very cheap today. Now I've got a, a, a very posh one here. This is a Rode microphone. This is my travel one. You can see it's really nice and cute. I take this all everywhere with me in my hand luggage. Um, at home, I have a big fat Yeti, a Yeti X. Uh, if you are going to be creating courses and investing in anything, make your audio your priority. People can be totally okay with you being a tiny little circle in the bottom of the screen. So um, it's that they can't, however, listen to somebody who sounds like they're presenting from the bottom of a tin of baked beans. So please make your audio your priority. But you again, you can go onto Amazon or eBay and get yourself a really quality microphone for as little as $20 today. They're not expensive anymore. They used to be. But now this, uh, this world of course creation has truly opened up to people on any budget at all. Now, in terms of filming the videos, again, this has just got easier and easier over time. 
five years ago, produ production was important. I used to have to set up all the green screen, have PowerPoint slides, be in a suit, right? Because that's kind of what the e-learning world, it was the, e the formal e-learning world that dictated what online learning looked like. Today, we actually have COVID to thank for something. Um, I'm not saying that I'm glad we went through that at all. But what has happened in the course creation world as a result of that awful experience is that people have become very accustomed to the format of online information dispersion and simply sharing knowledge is enough. So you can use Zoom to create your online courses today, really. You can just go and grab yourself the free version of Zoom, turn it on, turn on your camera, share your screen and start presenting with the record button turned on, even if you're doing it to yourself. The other tool I like to use is this tool called Loom up here. Um, I'm not going to turn it on because it will turn my camera off. Loom, quite simply, I'll try actually. When you press this button, <laughs> if I need you, I'm sorry. Um, there's, oh, it has turned my camera on. There we go. Um, you can see here, do you want to record your screen? Yes or no. Do you want to turn your camera on? Yes or no. And what microphone do you want to use? From there, you can move this bit around. You can make yourself super big. Um, you can, there's a much bigger one there. You can make yourself small. So I just turn this on and I start presenting, teach, teach, teach. Um, and I move myself around so that I'm not in the way. Um, you just press record and that records up on the cloud. You can then download the uh, MP4 version and then upload it into your online school. Ta-da, she's done, right? That's an amazing tool. Um, Loom has a free version and a paid version. The paid version um, allows you to create unlimited videos at unlimited lengths. The free version, you can only do five minute videos. It's well worth the paid version, which off the top of my head, don't quote me on this, is about $15 a month or thereabouts. Um, again, it used to be extremely expensive to record course videos because you had to have incredibly expensive software for 15 bucks a month you've got a tool that will record your screen and your head and your voice all at the same time with the click of one button Pew! there's no excuse there's no excuse anymore okay we're coming to closer to the end of this training step number nine for creating your online course is to then set up your tech and no, again, it is no longer as terrifying and complex as it once was. Here's what you need. A landing page that people can come to to read about your course. You can host that landing page on your own website um, or an all-in-one platform like Techmatics. They have to be able to go, what is this thing about? And they need to be able to buy it and put in their email address. That's the first thing. So if you've got a website already, you already have the capability to do that. If you don't have any tools yet, I recommend an all-in-one platform like Techmatics that you can use one of our pre-made course sales templates um, to just connect straight to your Stripe account and boom, you can start selling your course today within minutes of, of, of logging in and creating your account. You also will need to have a portal where you will upload your courses. So this is where you log in, you press create a course, you add your lesson, add a lesson, add a lesson, add a lesson, you upload your videos, you upload any attachments, you press save. And this is where when people do buy the course, they're automatically given access to that portal where they can go in and view your courses. That's the minimum. Um, when you want to take it to uh, the next level, which I do recommend, is also having some form of email marketing to be able to communicate with your students. And I prefer automated emails, i.e. ones that you write once and then they automatically send from there on in. What you really want at minimum is when someone logs into your course or they buy it for the first time, they're going to automatically receive a welcome email saying, hi, first name, welcome to my XYZ course. Here are your login details. And you want that to go out automatically. You do not want to be doing this manually. Right? People expect instantaneous login information. You certainly don't want to be sitting there awake 24 hours a day waiting for someone to buy your course. So you can respond straight away. Get tech to do it for you. It's very easy to set up. Again, in Techmatics, uh, that's all included. It's an all-in-one platform. It's also got all of your email marketing in there. And we have pre-made workflows for you to automatically send people their login details and check-in emails throughout the duration of your program. 
So just in terms of learning management systems, guys, there are four different types. I've just mentioned one to you, which is an all-in-one platform. An all-in-one platform is basically your, um, your website, your funnel builder, your landing pages. It is your email marketing system. It does all of your calendar bookings if you want to sell coaching calls and workshops. It hosts your courses. It hosts your memberships and coaching programs. It does all of your SMS marketing, all of your email automations, all of your customer journey, sales management. It does all of your social media scheduling and much more. And the number one platform for that is Techmatics. Kajabi is the closest um, similar all-in-one. It's not quite an all-in-one because it doesn't have all of those features, but you can build your landing pages courses on it. But Techmatics does way more for a much cheaper price than Kajabi charges. The other types of platforms you can use for your courses is a marketplace. You may have heard of Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y. Udemy is a marketplace. This is where Udemy owns the students. It's like a supermarket, but for courses. Udemy has 40 million registered students. 40 million, just wrap your head around that. So you're going to want to put some courses on Udemy to help you find an audience, to help to help you get people discovering you for the first time. But a word of warning with Udemy, they're not your students, they are Udemy students. So you do not get your their email addresses. Also, you have to adhere to Udemy's audio visual quality guidelines. So you are expected to create, create a higher quality production. You also have to stick to Udemy's rules around communication. You can't promote anything. You can't upsell anything unless you follow their very explicit marketing guidelines. You also... Um, cannot determine the pricing of your own courses. Udemy determine what your price sells for, your course sells for. Um, they can discount your course to as little as a few dollars and you only get a commission, not the whole sale. So you can basically end up only getting a couple of dollars for your courses. So why would you use a marketplace? Well, because 40 million students, that's why. <laughs> um, so what I recommend to get the most out of Udemy and use it in the right way is put your cheaper courses or your free courses on Udemy and see it as free marketing. See it as marketing that pays you. Keep your paid programs, your valuable programs on your own platform that you control. So again, on Techmatics, it's all branded in your branding. No one knows you're using Techmatics. It's all in your domain. It's all in your URL. You control and own your students. You have and own your students' email addresses. You can communicate with your students however you want. You determine your pricing. You get paid 100% of every sale. Techmatics don't touch your money. We don't process it. We don't take processing fees. It's your account. It's your business. It's your domain. It's your branding. It's your operation and your money. You want that your, your primary offerings in something that you control. Now, just to let you guys know, if you do sign up to Techmatics, you get a free 60 minute call, a setup call where our team will connect all of your domains for you, connect your emails for you, connect your calendars for you, um, help you set up uh, all of your payment integrations for you and get the whole thing uh, basically up and running and ready for you to upload your courses. If you do choose to join Concept of Course, we also create your course landing pages, upload your courses and get your whole thing up and running for you as well. Now, step number 10, finally, is the marketing. And unfortunately, this is where the real work begins. <laughs> I'm not going to come in here and tell you guys that any business is easy. You cannot just create a product. It doesn't matter how amazing your course is, how amazing your services are, how amazing the earrings are that you, that you have in your shop. If nobody knows about it, it's not going to sell. And it will only sell to the level at which you are doing your marketing. Organic marketing and paid marketing partnerships, there are a million different ways. Inside my Concept of Course program, I take you through every kind of launch and every kind of marketing method that you can be working towards. And I even teach you how you can automate a lot of that with the help of technology and virtual assistants. So I, I can't, I don't have time to go through that today. That is an entire module in its own right. Um, but you can do this today starting from zero. I had no email list. I had no website. I had no Facebook page. I had nothing when I started my courses. What you can start doing today is taking some of those questions that you found from Answer the Public, grab your phone and start creating quick two-minute tips to answer those. 
and telling people to follow you. Don't forget to like, subscribe and follow just to start building a following, to start attracting an audience. It's slow. So start today whilst you're busy putting together your paid courses. Once you've got a lead magnet, something that you're giving away for free, which you can also do on Techmatics. Um, you can make the call to action on those tip videos. Come and get my free thing at the very end, okay? So you can start getting email addresses. And then once you've got a paid thing, the call to action can be, and if you found this tip helpful, come and get my XYZ program. So that's kind of, you, you keep marketing all of the time whilst you are building your products so that you have an audience to announce stuff to and that audience never stops growing. You never stop marketing and never ever wait until you have a certain number of followers before you start selling your stuff. Okay, it's such a waste of precious time. There is absolutely um, no way that you can guarantee that those followers are gonna buy from you anyway. So you might as well just start selling anyway. All right, now what I do wanna tell you guys about, those are the 10 main steps to creating a course. And hopefully that has given you a much clearer idea as to what to expect to go through. Hopefully now you've got an idea of what type of course you're gonna create, what type of content might be in it, whether it's trending and how you're gonna start putting that together. Now, if you wanna actually make this happen and you wanna just get this first version, version one out to the world, come and join my concept of course program. I only run this twice a year. We are now officially open for the last, the second and last intake of this year. Um, this is where I take 30 people through a 30 day intensive coaching program where I help you in module one, plan your course and your entire business model with this course in mind. I then help you create the content and the outline for your course and how you're going to deliver it. In module three, week three, I then take you through the tech. So by the time you've got through week three, you will have your whole school set up, all of your tech done. In the standard plan, I'm gonna teach you how to do it yourself. In the pro plan, I do it for you. So the tech is done. Not only will your school be built, all of your payment gateways done, your landing page done, your course uploaded, your email automations to check in with your students will also be in place as well. And I'm gonna throw in a social media bot for you to help answer the common questions from your audience. You can start automating your leads as well. I know it's amazing, all done for you. And finally in module four, week four, uh, we go through all of the different kinds of launches that you can do and all of the different marketing that you can start today to start selling the thing that you've just created in Concept of Course. So um, this is where I will personally, guys, walk you through the entire process. You have pre-recorded content to go through at any time that suits you. We have people from all over the world joining this program, so you can fit it into your schedule as you wish. You're going to need about three to five hours a week to get through the content. We also have a live group call once a week. So there's four calls, one a week, where I, again, will, in 90 minutes, walk you through the absolute must-do things that week to get through that module and get that part of the course creation process complete. You also get a secret Facebook group in Concept of Course where I am there every single day. You have unlimited access to me guys in that 30 days where I you can ask me anything. I answer in live streams or in the group or I contact you privately if it's about something really specific to your business. Basically, if you do everything I teach you and help you with in that 30 days, you cannot come out of it without your course done. So if you've been thinking about this for years, or if you don't want years to go by, <laughs> please get version one done. Version one, you will wish you did it sooner um, because once you've got version one out there, you can get your first people in, you can evolve it, iterate it, add in more content. Your course is always living and breathing. This is going to help you get that first version out there and you're going to be so grateful that you did. We've had so many people go through this program, have gone on to become world famous professional speakers. They've gone on to become best selling authors. They've come to become really sought after experts in their field because the second you are seen to have been dedicated enough to contribute to the body of knowledge in your field with a course, you are instantaneously leveraged in your status and credibility in your industry. This shows that you are a dedicated professional in your field. You are a go-to expert because you have gone to the level of creating a professional product around your area of expertise, led by a professional, experienced and qualified educator 
and teacher trainer. If you've got any questions at all about Concept of Course, first of all, just go to sarahcordner.com forward slash C2C, and this will take you to this information page. It has a little video in there explaining more, and it's got a um, the details of every single thing that you get in this program, every single thing you're going to learn, all the resources that you're going to get from me. And if you've got any more questions at all, again, you can feel free to just drop, drop them in the comments and I'll get back to you or email me on sarah at sarahcordner.com. Uh, just want to say thank you so much for coming along today. I know it's a lot to take in. This is a whole new subject for many of you and it will take some time to, to kind of go through. But guys, really, when it comes to doing this, the time is now. Half of the world doesn't yet have the internet. So you have a once in a lifetime golden opportunity to really lead in your field. I know you might think everyone's doing it. They are not. 0.0% of the world are actually creators. Half of the world doesn't have the internet. You have an unfair advantage over 3.8 billion people right now who would give anything to be in the position that you have to take the lead in your field right now. There are enough people out there uh, for, for to, to, to come and join your course. So um, you are going to look back and wish that you had started a year ago if you don't do it today. I'm just going to check through some of the questions that we have. Um, da -da -da -da. Mm -hmm. uh, Haida says that you've paid to do a setup. It's not different. It's not concept of course. If you can send me an, e uh, an email, Haida, we'll have a look at your uh, personal situation um, there. I would need to look at your account with what you've got. Um, just seeing if there's any questions in the Zoom. If you are commenting on social media, I will come and look on social media after this call today. Uh, lots of people saying thank you. You're very, very welcome. Um, offer, offer script. Do you have some sales script? Yes. Okay. Do I have sales scripts for a sales page? Yes, I do. Um, inside Concept of Course, inside the marketing module in week four, I have actually included the script outlines and the script templates for how to write your sales page. And yes, that's been a tried and tested script since way before AI existed, and it still beats what AI gives. However, it, per it, it does produce a perfect structure for you to then go and tap into AI. Um, Heidi says, can I get the recording? Yes, this has all been recorded. It will all be inside your portal if you've uh, logged in to the, registered for this particular session. Um, you can also go to sarahcordner.com forward slash free hyphen stuff. Um, and all of my training is in there as well. Okay, I'm not seeing any more uh, questions coming up on the Zoom. Apologies if I've missed it. Do email me um, if you if I didn't answer your question. Otherwise, I really hope to see some of you in Concept of Course. There are only 30 places, so do check that out. Uh, otherwise, happy course creating. Enjoy the process of creation. A lot of people put so much pressure on themselves when it comes to doing this. Have fun. This is the ultimate self-expression. You get to share what you love. You get to share your passion with other people. You get to leave a legacy. This stuff can be out there for the rest of time. How many people get to leave a legacy like that? This is your, your chance to make a dent in the world, to contribute to the body of knowledge in your field and to go to bed at night feeling like you've made a difference. Your task here isn't necessarily to become viral. Your task here is to help people, to change some lives. And when I went into this field, it was such a new concept when I began this many years ago that I didn't know what to expect in terms of the level of success that I was going to have. And I went in thinking, if I create this course and I change one person's life, for me, that is so worth it. If my existence and my life's work and my contribution to my field changes one person's life. For me, that's a life worth living. That is something to go away and finish up this world really proud of. I had no idea that would go on to be millions of people. I had no idea. But simply being passionate enough to lead with, I am going to be the most helpful person in my field. Why? Because I love it has gone on to serve me and millions of people directly and indirectly. And you can do exactly the same thing with nothing more than a heart full of passion and some good old entrepreneurial determination. Good luck. Can't wait to see your courses come to life. My name's Sarah Cordner. See you guys soon.
<laughs> See y'all.